Hey everybody, welcome back to operations management. In this lesson, we'll be discussing demand forecasting. Um, so let's just quickly talk about what that even means. Um, it's really straightforward, really. A forecast is just a prediction of what you think your demand or your sales are going to be in some future period. And these forecasts can be qualitative, which is uh, you know not number-based, really based on uh, judgment, opinion, expertise, whatever. Or it could be quantitative where, there's, where it's based on an actual formula. And that is what we're going to be covering in this lesson, the different quantitative methods of forecasting, right? So how can I take my sales from the last six months to predict my sales for the next six months, for example? Now, the first thing, just to get you know, a little bit of theory out of the way, it's important to understand the difference between a trend, a cycle, and a seasonal, uh, and seasonal demand. And for this, I want to show it to you using uh, some graphs, okay? So first of all, a trend. The word trend or trending means that demand is generally moving in some direction, either up or down. You know, for example, an upward trend would be demand that is increasing. So this would be like, uh, we'll just say demand is our y-axis and time is our x-axis. That is generally increasing. It doesn't mean it has to increase every single period, right? It, it could do it could do something like this, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, 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 where Generally, it's moving in an upward way. Or it could be, you know, uh, a downward trend. A downward trend is the same thing. It's, you know, generally moving downwards. So that's a that's trend or trending demand. Now, seasonal demand, you've all heard of this. Seasonal is when there's a pattern that repeats every single year. Now, it doesn't literally have to be the seasons, like winter, summer, fall, spring. It could be anything that it repeats annually. Uh, your your school, for example, is separated into three seasons. There's the summer, and then there's the spring and the fall, or the winter and the fall, depending where you live. The point is that seasonal patterns repeat every year. So it'd be something like, you know, a very predictable pattern. S cyclical is different. It's like seasonal in the sense that it's wavy, but it's not as predictable. The cycles can last long, you know, a long time, whereas um, the entire seasonal pattern has to repeat in one year. A cycle can last many, many years, like the economic cycle, economic cycle where we go, you know, recessions, expansions, recessions, expansions. The, the main difference is that uh, the cycle lasts a long time, that it, it's less predictable. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that if the last cycle lasted a year, that the next cycle will last a year, the, the times can be different. We don't really deal with cyclical demand, by the way, in this chapter, it's just to understand. And then an upward trend with seasonality would be something like this, where it's seasonal, so it's wavy, but it is generally moving in an upward in an upward way. So it's, you know, if I had taken an upward trend, but then combined it with something seasonal. So try and imagine, um, you know, a winter coat which would be seasonal, that has become more and more and more and more and more popular over time. So, you know, each winter demand will spike up. And then, you know, in the summer, it'll come back down. But then the following year, it'll be even higher because it's becoming more popular. We'll actually talk about something like this a little bit later, right? So the, this is what these terms mean. Now, we're going to be spending pretty much the entire time on the different forecasting methods. And so let's start with the most basic one. It's called the naive method or the naive approach. The naive approach basically requires no calculation. The naive approach is when you expect your sales will be whatever they were the period before, where the forecast for any given period, and that's what FT means, FT, the forecast for any period for period T is the actual demand, A is for actual, T minus one of the previous period. So. Your forecast for October is whatever you sold in September. Your forecast for December is whatever you sold in November. Okay, so that's it. That's the naive approach. And then you've got moving averages. Moving averages just means you're taking an average of the most recent period. Now, it could be a three-period moving average, a four-period moving average, a six-period moving average, right? It could be anything. But the, the point is that you're taking the average of the n most recent periods. Now it could be an arithmetic average, which is just a, a regular average, right? Adding them up and dividing by n. But it could also be a weighted average. 
A weighted average is what you would use if you're trying to put more emphasis on certain periods. Like let's say the most recent period is more relevant than three months back. You can, you can achieve that by using a weighted average. So I wanna solve this first exercise with you guys uh, to really go over the first three that we talked about. So it says an, electri an electrical contractor's records during the last five weeks indicate the following number of jobs. Okay, so these, these are your actual sales in the last five weeks. Predict the number of requests for week six using each of the methods. So for the naive approach, the forecast for period six would be the actual from period five. So that would be 22. Okay, that's it. Whatever you sold the previous period. Now for B, the four week moving average, you're gonna take the previous four periods. So if you're at time six, you're gonna take basically A5, A4, A3, and A2, because they said to use four weeks, divided by four. So 22 plus 21 plus 18 plus 22 divided by four. Twenty point seventy five. Okay, so that's B. Okay, really straightforward. And then the weighted moving average is the same thing in the sense that you're taking the most recent periods, but now we're going to assign weights to it. This is basically telling me that I want the most recent period to make up forty percent of my forecast. Okay, the, the highest weight is typically on the most recent and then it works, it works backwards. So I want the furthest one to only make up 10% of my forecast. So the way that you do this, this is now for C, you're going to take 40%, so 0.4, times the most recent sales, which would be 22, so period five, plus the next weight, which is 0.3, times the second most recent, so time four, and then you keep working backwards, let's see what we get. You should get 20.9. Okay, great. So those are the first three most basic forecasting techniques. Now let's get into slightly more advanced ones and the ones that you could probably expect to be tested on on an exam. We'll start with exponential smoothing. Exponential smoothing is kind of like an, a moving average, but where we're putting, or where we're also taking into account the forecasting error. So, if you look at the formula here, it says the forecast for any given period is equal to the forecast from the period before, plus this is called a smoothing constant. This will always be provided uh, in the question. You don't have to calculate that. And then this part here is a bracket missing, but this part here is called the error. And you see the error is just the difference between the actual and the forecast. The error is the difference between the actual and the forecast. And so it considers the error from the previous period in the forecast. So th the forecast is essentially trying to adjust itself based on how close or how far it came from being right the month before or the period before. For you guys, it's just a formula. Um, memorize it if you're not given a formula sheet, but typically you will be given this on a formula sheet. So we've got here, uh, kind of a whole story, but I can see here that my alpha, my smoothing constant is 0.4. You've been given the demand for the first four months and you've been given an initial forecast. You, you always need to have an initial forecast when it comes to exponential smoothing. Now, they will often give it to you. Like here, I gave it to you, it's 37. If they don't, okay, listen up. If they didn't give it to you, then just plug whatever number this is, use that as your initial forecast. The first period, if, and 
guys, we're not doing it in this question, but, but pay attention to what I'm saying. If an initial forecast is not given to you, just assume that your first forecast is equal to your actual sales and then start there. Okay. So now the way that this forecasting method works, even though I'm looking for May, I can't go directly to May. I need to find February, March, April, and to then get May. So let's start. My forecast for period two, if I follow the formula, okay, I'm going to take my forecast from period one plus my smoothing constant times the actual from period one minus the forecast from period one. See, I'm writing it this way so you can see why I'm going to choose the numbers that I choose. So I'm trying to find F2, which is this number. I'll start with F1, which was 37. The smoothing constant is 0.4. That was given to you right there. The, the actual from the previous period minus the forecast. So I get 37.4. So I'm going to write 37.4 right here. And then we're going to repeat, repeat, repeat until we get to F5. So for F3, I'm going to take everything from period two. Right, so it'd be F2. And, and on an exam, you wouldn't want to write everything that I'm writing. This would take up a lot of time and, and, and waste a lot of time. This is just for you guys to understand, again, why I'm choosing the numbers that I'm choosing. So 37.4 plus 0 0.4 times 41 minus 37.4. Thirty-eight point eighty-four. Okay, F four. I'm going to take everything from period three. So I'll take my forecast from period three, the number you just calculated, plus zero point four times the actual three minus the forecast three. Forty point one zero four, and your forecast period five would be forty point one zero four plus point four times thirty eight minus forty point one zero four. So your final answer here is 39.2624. And that's how you use exponential smoothing. It's not complicated, right? It's just a formula that you repeat, repeat, repeat until you reach your desired uh, forecast. Okay. Trend adjustment.